Hello there, anyone and everyone who may or not be watching. Um, welcome. Welcome to the show. Uh, we're just getting started, so feel free to settle in. I don't know if we have any viewers or not at the moment, but that's a-okay. Welcome to those who are watching um, in the future here on the Twitch VOD channel, or if you're watching it on YouTube, welcome, welcome. Happy to have you. Um, I guess I should take out this banner now because we're getting started. Awesome. Cool. And we're ready to go. Um, so yes, welcome to episode one. Um, officially, if you saw us last time, we were doing episode zero, which was introducing me. But today I actually have a guest, which is so flippin' exciting. Um, I'm so happy that she's here. Um, but yeah, here's a little bio to introduce her. So having finished her undergrad in theater performance at Wagner College in Staten Island, New York, my guest is now taking on a new journey in Boston, earning her master's in theater education and applied theater, as well as her certification to teach K-12 in the state of Massachusetts. She is also perhaps one of the sweetest nuggets I've ever met. And I could not be more excited that she's going to be teaching some of the mo some of our future generations of theater artists to be above all else kind. Uh, so please give a warm welcome to Elena Rose Broyer. Hello, <laughs> welcome. It's so funny introducing you after like having talked with you for the past like fifteen minutes and catching up and things. I know. <laughs> like we didn't talk at all. I know we didn't talk at all. No, you just not here. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. But how are you? How are you? I know you just came from work, so I hope. Yeah, you know, I was in my hand like 20 minutes ago. It's all good. It's okay. It was, you know, happy accident, I guess. <laughs> that's how I look at it. <laughs> um, I mean, the best way you can. Honestly, that's one of the best examples of you as a person is be like, yeah, I hurt my hand, but I'm making the best of it. I mean, I was like, I was like shaking and I'm like, you know, putting my hand under the water and I'm like, oh God, you know, what is this? But, um, but it's still like, uh, it's, it happens. Like it's yeah. not the first time, nor is it going to be the last. Listen, if anybody out there works at a coffee shop, you know, yeah, you know, I feel like, I feel like anyone in any type of food industry, you know, you will hurt your hand at least maybe like. 50, 20, 10, you know, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> but yeah, how was, your, how was your first semester of grad school? I know for me, it was a, a wild ride that first semester. So how are you? How are you doing? Um, We're feeling it. Yeah. <laughs> if I, if, um, yeah, I'm being very transparent. It's a lot. It's um, mm -hmm. especially right now, um, doing observations, uh, doing. Oh, so you're doing those like right away too. Yeah. That's really <laughs> awesome to get yeah. in the classroom that quickly. Yeah. It's, I mean, I'm glad we're just sitting there not, you know, doing anything yet. I'm just yeah. like, okay, let me just observe and see how I feel being in a classroom. It is a lot because I'm observing middle schoolers and that's, that is a generation of kids that is like, there's so much going on for them. And I feel there's a lot of discoveries in that moment because I know I had discoveries in those moments. Oh, didn't we all? Didn't we all? <laughs> yeah. So I I think that like it's just it, it's a stressful time for them too. So I completely understand. But also the teacher I was observing, she was very patient with them, like didn't didn't raise her voice or anything. So it was it was very nice. Yeah. It's, it's nice to get like a good example of like how to work with kids in the classroom. Oh yeah, like I, I'm like, oh my God, I would not, I would be crying in the bathroom because I, like it It was crazy, you know, some of the, it took her 10, 20 minutes just to get them to like focus. And yeah. then we only had like, we only had like so much time to really like- Those short pieces. Yeah, yeah, it's it's like, it's like, whoa, I didn't realize how, you know, those periods felt long for me. Oh, absolutely. But yeah. I would be like a 40 minute, like. <laughs> Even on the outside perspective, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> How do you teach anything in that short amount of time? Like what? It's 45 minutes. And I'm it's like, insane. It's so short looking back. And I'm like, what? How? <laughs> but, I, don't know. I commend them for doing it. <laughs> oh, truly, truly. 
So to give a little bit of context for those watching as to how Elena and I already know each other very well, um, we went to school together at little, little tiny little Wagner College, um, not in the same year, but a few years ahead a part of each other. Um, but yeah, did, I don't think we actually worked on any shows together, did we? Like even backstage? No. I don't think we did tech assignments at the same time. No, we did not. I don't think we did, which is wild. We had classes together and that's... Yeah, yeah, because we definitely had dance together because we had we had modern was our big one. Did we have other ones too, or is it just modern? I feel like we had did we have ballet together? We might have. We might have at one point. Yeah. That sounds right. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, how like I know you, but how do I know you? Well, I mean, there's so much social time outside of class. Oh yeah. Theater school. So like of course we know each other even though we didn't have that much class together. But I mean, like, look, we were always part of that, like, bre breakfast, lunch club, pre or post dance class. Like, I could always count on, like, you, like, Andrew Kolar, like, a few people always being, like, there before or after, um, eat some food with, nourish ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think that's just the beauty of our, like, our program, too, is just, like, if you see anybody in D Hall, especially during dinner, you just, like, can be like, hey, can I sit with you? And people are like, yeah. Yeah. Not. Well, no, and it's really funny because even in like I remember back to like my first semester freshman year, like I wasn't good at that because being that I wasn't in the like theater performance class to start with, I didn't know a lot of them and because they all sat together during orientation, we weren't in the same classes, so I was like, can I sit with them and that kind of thing and it, it's so funny looking back on it now because I'm like, well, yeah, of course I'm going to go like sit with like Bill and like, <laughs> and like Zach and things like that. And so it's, it's very funny, but yeah, no, absolutely. I think that's always one of those fun things of like, yeah, you can sit with us. Come on, come, come over here. Yeah. And I think it's also just like our, our vibes as humans as well. You and I are both like, come here, child, come, come sit with us. Like <laughs> spot. there's always a spot. There's always room. There's, I always say there's always room. And then you would be on that little table squeezing with everybody because you want to sit with all your friends and yeah. then it's very sad when they have to start another table oh no i i specifically even remember being like people being like oh there's no room and i'm like no we will make room no, we room. will make room at this lunch table like or someone will be like oh i i'm actually leaving right now like i mm -hmm. come sit here yeah. <laughs> take my spot exactly exactly <laughs> Oh my gosh. Good memories though. Good memories. Good memories. Um, to get into like, sorry, like my, for a second, I thought I was like rolling over a cord on like my, and my rolly chair. And I'm like, no, no, stop. Why are you doing that? <laughs> But no, we're good. We're good. good, good. Um, but yeah, getting into like sort of the, the main overtures part of, um, part of our little show here. How did you first get started in theater? Did you get started like as a kid? Did you get started through dance? How, what was your journey into theater at the yeah. beginning? Oh, this weighted question. Well, yeah, of course. But like, even this is like, oh, I did the school play, you know? Like, what, what was your first theatrical experience? It's like, if I, I'm going to give you spark notes. Okay. Yeah, go for so, it. Um, theater's kind of always, theater's always been a part of my life. But like, no, it's <laughs> like being like that. Like, I, like, not, like, I didn't do shows when I was younger, but my dad always put on like, like, there was three albums that I would play on repeat. Um, and it was the Cats album, the Les Mis one, and Jekyll and Hyde. And because those were my dad's three favorites, especially Jekyll and Hyde, my dad will, there's there's like old scratches on the CD. That's how much we played it. And, um, and I remember getting the first like, cat cd like of the the live production that they filmed and oh, like the vhs version of it oh, yeah. i watched that to death as a kid so like i i'm with you there i'm with yeah. you there. you know we know oh, absolutely <laughs> <laughs> and uh, i literally have like home videos of me dancing and making my mom dance you know um rumple teaser mm -hmm. and mongo jerry with me and doing the cat the white cat dance because that was like something i like always inspired Same. me yeah so i really wanted to be victoria <laughs> oh, i now want to be syllabub slash jemima because she's my favorite cat <laughs> so uh still a dream always will be a dream um but 
Yeah. I mean, I like my parents always took me to shows and always like my dad's always been like a lover of music and stuff. And my mom's my mom's side of the family, my um my grandfather, my abuelito, he is a mariachi. So that's on mm -hmm. my mom's side. So I kind of had a musical bug kind of, but I never was like, oh, let me do shows. I, yeah. <laughs> I was terrified to like even do anything in front of anybody, mm -hmm. but in the comfort of my own home, I was like, I can pretend and be, you know, like a witch or a princess. And, yeah. you know, and I, yeah. So um, I think as I got older, I was like, Oh, I, I do like theater and I do enjoy these shows and, and, and very much watching them and feeling inspired by them. But it really was not until like, like high school, I started doing yeah. musical theater. Up until then, I was like, oh, let me try gymnastics. Didn't work out. Mm -hmm. um, and then I danced most of my life. Yeah, I, I've danced for a good portion of my life up until like middle school. Yeah. And then started back up again when my mom was like, all right, you're going to college for theater? Get, get your butt back into dance. And I went, yeah. okay. <laughs> that I did something similar. <laughs> Yeah, and it you it, it's really telling when you go back and you're like, oh, <laughs> these muscles that I have not used in a very long time um, has has just started working again. So. Yeah, so I just got back into classes at BDC and even just taking like basic ballet class. I'm like, oh right, that's how that feels. Okay, yep. I did a ballet bar the other day and I went, oh yep, that's that's <laughs> it. That's it. <laughs> but I think it, I think it's really interesting. There's something to be said for all of the cast recordings and those pro shots that like really went around in like the 90s and things like that when we were little youngins that inspired a whole generation. And I think it's really cool that more like pro shots and stuff are happening. I know. And they look even like they look like movie shots. Like they oh, look yeah. like, like you don't even tell it's on his like the other ones like you could tell it's on a stage but like these ones I feel like I'm there with the actors and I'm yeah. there like actually like in the space mm -hmm. and I think that's very important yeah because like mine because mine were like cats the music man and um oh my god I just lost it um and godspell and like those are so like intertwined with the city or like the the city of the music man and like yeah. Indiana, you know yeah or even but. like a beauty and the beast is very much you know it's like on a stage because there's so mm -hmm. much to look at and um but i i think that especially because technology has come such a long way yeah. it's really like changed the industry and how especially technical tech like technical wise i mm -hmm. think it's so changed. Oh, um, absolutely. I feel like we're. I'm getting off topic. <laughs> <laughs> you're, good, you're good. I was just about to go into like the main overtures question of like the one that like Mickey always likes to ask the directing students. But what was your light bulb moment of wow, this is what I want to do like with life, with be a theater or in your case, theater education. You know. Um, yeah. um, I think like performance wise I like I went through a lot of like emotional stuff personally and it wasn't until I went into my first acting class and I studied like I did like a little bit of Meisner which is probably one of my favorite techniques uh going into like my high school and my and college a little bit um I think that was the moment I was like why is this so healing and mm -hmm. like and then it made me like kind of like you know, go back in time to like <laughs> when it was healing me and I didn't even know it. Mm. Um, that's and, really beautiful. Yeah, I, and I think that like, that's just something that like, I don't think we realize until like those moments where it's like, oh yeah, like, like arts, like not just theater, it's just arts in general just heals a lot of people. And I think that um, it also speaks numbers like incredible numbers especially now with you know the movement happening now and the industry changing and evolving and yeah. and more being said and spoken up about you know which i'm like thank god yeah, exactly it's it's incredible and it's it shows the 
tenacity of people who are in the industry and who, and how powerful, you know, everybody is, not just the actors, I'm saying everybody in the industry. Yeah. Well, and, and I think that's interesting too, because like, I'm thinking back on like theater history where like the Greeks, like it, it was mandatory to go see theater because of its cathartic qualities that healed society and personally. And, and I think it's funny how we're kind of re we're returning to that in, in some ways, even if it comes in the form of like a shakedown, you know, right. it, it all comes back to this is meant to heal. Why are we hurting in the process of trying to heal? Yeah. 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 I, and it, I think it, it's also really interesting. I think it like really speaks to you as a human that it's like, oh, that you were drawn to the healing aspect of theater. And I think that's really cool it, how that brings you then to theater education because like the healing powers and how you approach theater education. How did you decide that you wanted to be a theater educator? So we know, we all know COVID, you know. Yeah, oh, we, we know, we well, know well. We know, and um, I, you know, being sent home that excuse there are street noises and if it comes through that's great no worries. Everybody enjoy the sounds of the street we invite it to the party <laughs> <laughs> um uh yeah covid was hard uh being sent home and trying to film myself doing ballet bar and trying to film myself doing singing and doing self tapes and doing auditions over zoom i I, I, it's something that really sucked the passion from me for doing performance. And I was like, I, I was like, why is this like, like I, it was a bad time. And I think that everybody can very much attest to that. And I very much acknowledge everybody's journey. And I hope you're healing from that. I genuinely hope everybody's healing from that and finding ways to heal from that. Um, and I think the moment I was like, you know what? I had a whole group like reunion with my old like theater group and we all sat down and we all talked and I was like, I might want to do teaching. Don't know what possessed me to say that. Oh, that's so It's been a thought in the back of my head, especially when I was like, I was going into my undergrad, but it never was like, you know, it was never like, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. I lost my train of thought. No, that's okay. I think that's that's really powerful when you have those moments of like, you just get hit with things and you're like, oh, I, I think I need to follow yeah. this. Like I like, I shut yeah. my laptop and then I went, why did I just say that? Yeah, the serendipity of it. Cause like, even <laughs> for me, I remember I was like literally walking to work back in like, right june or july when i got hit with the like i want to start i should start a podcast and now granted it's taken a different form and we're here and now we're on episode one talking about serendipity but like it, it's still one of those things sometimes you get hit with things and you're like oh okay i think yeah. i need to take this yeah so that's when i was like i opened my laptop back up and i went good theater education programs mm -hmm. and then nyu came up one in Jersey came up and then Boston came up. And then I went, wait a minute. I went to Massachusetts for the first time, like before COVID. Mm -hmm. And I love, I fell in love with Salem and Salem's so beautiful and such a tight knit town. Mm -hmm. So it's like, and Massachusetts is gorgeous. So I was like, this, this might be the move. And of course I was looking into, I was looking into NYU cause I, I do love, I do love New York city. I just, I think right now this is where I'm meant to be. Yeah. And, and it was meant to happen that way. And so I like, I went through the whole, like, I'm going to meet with people. I met with people from, you know, uh, Emerson. I met with people from, um, you know, my admissions there. And I was like, listen, I was like, I, I'm gonna be honest, my undergrad was very expensive and I kind of laid down the law of like, I won't be able to come here if there's no like financial aid. Yeah. That's, and that's the T, <laughs> yeah. and that's the T. And I, I, I remember I actually had a conversation with Michelle yesterday, Michelle 
Michelle Puck, everyone. We'll, we'll, we'll miss Tony, Tony Award winning. Tony Award winning Michelle Puck. <laughs> and, um, and she was like, I said, you know what? I, cause I remember the one thing that stuck with me, one of the things that stuck with me was she was saying like, you demand the respect that you, that you deserve. And, and even my cousin said that to me and I said, you know what? Yeah. So I was, I went in and I'm like, listen, this is the deal. And like, even if it helps like a little bit, I like, I, do, I didn't care. I just wanted, I wanted to get in. I wanted to have a way to be there regardless of my, you know, admission status. I was like, I, I want some kind of financial aid to help me be here. And um, so, yeah, it ended up being the only program I applied to. And um, I, I was trying to do the early bird because that was like when you would be um, acceptable for like different grants, different things. So I was like, rushing to get everything in. I remember staying up late at night and um, Austin Nakamura, another shout out, um, helping me write my paper. Yeah. And I'm being like, is this okay? What am I saying? <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And, um, and him revising it and going through it with me. And then I was like, okay, I'm sending it in. And I sent it in and it was due that Monday. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I get a thing that says I'm missing something. And I went, oh my God, hold on. Of that. <laughs> oh, but it, was weird how it worked because they emailed me and they're like, Hey, we noticed that like you have one thing left. They're like, we're going to give you another week and you'll still be qualified. Mm -hmm. And I went, you're kidding. So, I so I was like, okay, I need more, one more, one more recommendation letter. And I was like, oh. and then I went, you know what? I'm going to ask Amy Williams because <laughs> Amy, Amy knows, knows me. Yes. So I like, let me, and then Amy that night, <laughs> the night right before it was due the next week, sent it to me. I sent it in and then I waited. <laughs> and then there we were. Yep. And I think Amy, I think Amy wrote a, a rec letter for me too. And like yeah. you were applying during your senior year, yeah. So I understand how crazy that is. Cause like you're trying to enjoy your senior year whilst also being like, I have to gather all these materials and think about what I'm going to be doing for the next like years, trying to apply to these schools. Yeah. So like, I, I mean, props to you for only having, having the restraint to only apply for one, but like that, that's so awesome. And so magical that, that serendipity of like, Nope, this is the one this I'm, this is going to happen. And I think it just worked out like, I don't know, the fates or something aligned, the stars aligned or something. Because I strings were pulled. Yes, because I even applied to NYU and I and I was missing stuff. And then they ended up just closing, my application just ended up closing. And I went, so I got one option right now. Yeah. And then I went, huh. And then everybody was getting their, you know, acceptances to grad schools, whoever applied. And I was there like, oh my God. I'm like, why haven't I heard? Like, yeah. what? what what and i was there you know at my zoom class my psychology class was on zoom and i'm in my room and uh divya i was living with divya lindy and lila uh my last semester and they were dancing hip-hop in in the in the common room and um i was there and i got an email being like oh your emerson status is updated and i went okay you're like, do I'm like, I open this now? <laughs> like, do I need to do this right now? And then I went, yeah. So I went in, and the thing is, like, they do that waiting game. It's like, it's like those rushing nest, Russian nesting dolls, where you're like, <laughs> God damn it! I just let me open. Like, just give me the link. Yeah, let me go through five different ones. <laughs> no, I had, to, I had to click the link. I had to log in, and then it was like, <laughs> click here for your admissions. And I'm like. And then it was another thing. And then I'm like, no. and then the confetti is on the screen and it says oh. congratulations. And I went, I can't, I can't go out into the common room to tell them because they're in class. I'm in class. And I, I'm calling my mom. My mom's at work. My oh. dad won't pick up. So <laughs> answers, but my aunt Dulce, my aunt Dulce answers and she's like, what? What? Who's dying? And I'm like, no, I said, I got into grad school. And she went, what? And then she always says when she's so fulfilled with emotion, she always says, I cry now. Mm. And um, 
and she's like, I cry now. She's like, if I can flip and everything, I would. And I'm like, I'm like, oh my God. I was like, what is happening? <sighs> and then, you know, class ended for everybody. And I run out with my laptop. And then I'm like, I'm shaking. And they're like, what? <laughs> Did you and Lindy and Lila are looking at me like I'm crazy. And I am. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I got it. With the education, and they were like, and Divi was like, "That is correct. <laughs> that is the right decision." <laughs> so I was there, like, and then obviously my parents ended up calling me back and was like, what, "What's going on? Are you okay?" And I was like, "Yeah, I'm just, you know, overjoyed." Yeah, the the love and support that you get from everyone in those kinds of moments is just like, oh, it's everything. Yeah. It's everything. And and the thing is, we and talking with you know Michelle yesterday, I was talking about my paper because we do a six month plan paper, mm -hmm. and I wrote about Emerson. I was like, I don't even know if this is gonna happen, <laughs> and I like I handed it into Wendy, and I was like, I don't even know if this is gonna happen, but this is my plan, and I'm gonna live there, and blah blah blah, and this mm -hmm. is gonna happen there, and maybe I'll take some teaching jobs and work at a coffee shop, and like all of that has happened and it's just like and i told her yesterday i'm like the fact that that paper is now like actually came into fruition honestly like blows my mind yeah you you put it down you're like universe this would be case this number cool. one. like this would be amazing and here you go yeah. and the universe is like i think we can do that yeah, and I and I remember emailing Wendy because Wendy read my paper and I was like, hey, I got in. And then I went into class the next day and her and Michelle were like, oh my God. And I was like, I know it I'm I didn't even uh -huh. it didn't even process until I, I actually got here, if I'm being completely honest. Yeah. And I was well, like I that. Oh my God, I'm living on my own in Boston and going, doing something that I wrote down in a freaking paper. And I called it, I literally called it Elena's Lament. What am <laughs> I doing with my life? <laughs> so I was like, that paper went from being so stressful to actually being like my own manifestation. Yeah. Uh, and oh my gosh. It's, it, and that's such a beautiful, powerful thing to be able to like, when th something goes so smoothly like that, it's like, how, what else can you blame? But like the stars in the sky to like have helped you in that moment, you know, it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Um, talking about like teaching and things. I know you were mentioning, cause we were, had, we had a little bit of a conversation of sorts being like, what all do you want to talk about? Like when you're on the show and so on and so forth. And you were particular, you had particularly mentioned working on guiding students like away from perfectionism um yeah. like in very specifics do you want to like talk about that a little bit and like what specifically about that yeah inspires you so i recently got diagnosed with ocd and mm -hmm. i was like oh my god and i became such a perfectionist my last semester especially i think covid triggered a lot of like okay i think i have to overcompensate now because i feel like i've lost I've lost time in my training or, you know, in my experience. And, um, and I think that like, I look back at that now and I'm like, ah, oh, that's BS. Like, it, no, I didn't lose anything. I just, it was just a pause. It's, yeah. you know, it was an intermission, if you will. Yes, exactly. Um, so, like, it doesn't like, I don't, I like, I don't want to look at it as like, yes, a year was taken away from us, but also like, I think a lot of clarity was also gained from that. Yeah. Um, and uh, for a lot of us, mm -hmm. and I think that, um, you know, I, I think it came, that came about because I was talking with my teacher about helping them, you know, not, I was like, hey, I wanna teach kids how to not feel like they need to be perfect, especially coming into this, business and and auditioning even just auditioning for colleges because I think that's a lot of our mindsets especially is like going into something where like we have to be like Kelly O'Hara we have yeah. to be you know we have to be the best of the best and I'm and it's like 
No, we don't because right. they don't want a perfect, they don't want a perfect, you know, puzzle piece. They just want. Yeah. And, if, they, and if they want to hire Kelly O'Hara, they're going to hire Kelly they're O'Hara. They're going to hire Kelly O'Hara. They're going to just yeah. call her up and be like, hey, come down. Yeah. So it's, it's the being you is. It's the, probably the most important thing. And I I found an article um, with um, Studio Habits of Mind and um, and it was from Harvard. You can definitely look up. It's Harvard's Project Zero, I believe. And they have a bunch of psychology because so much, so much psychologist comes out of Harvard and everything. And um, they they studied a uh, art studio and art students like physical arts and visual arts. And uh, they realized that, you know, using their, um, their stretching and expressing using different time uh, and space using their bodies um, was very important. And also mm -hmm. giving them like a small time crunch doesn't let them think in their head too much. Yeah. So having them work on the spot for a lot of their, um, projects and their assignments was very important. And so I were learning a drama based pedagogy, which is a bunch of sounds fancy. <laughs> it's basically all of the theater games that you know and love and then some. Yeah. And, um, it's, it's so mind boggling. Cause you're like, Oh, I'm here like playing a game with my, you know, my community yeah. and people who are studying with me in grad school, but it's also like we tie it back to how does this, how is this a metaphor for teaching? Absolutely. And, and I think that, uh, and then we go, whoa, okay, now we got to think a little bit meta here and be like, okay, what is, what is this? Yeah. And, um, and so I think that's, I, I, I love a lot of body work and I think that focusing physically sometimes takes us out of our head and um, I think that reminding people that everybody's, you know, body's different. Everybody's, everybody's body's there to, you know, nourish them and to, you know, keep them alive and also just to be in this world. And I think that um, that's very important. And I always, I let people know that, you know, your, your shape might not look like the same as another person's shape. It's gonna look different because it's in your body in a different way. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, I did like a, I asked them to name words and they gave me really weird words like margarita. <laughs> I got, I got anxiety and I got um, squirrel and I, we got like different words. I was like, what words are like popping into your head? Like, I don't care what they are. And then we wrote them down and then I had them walk through the space. And then um, I was like, okay, I want, um, I want you guys to make a statue of this. And the the drama based pedagogy strategy was show me blank. So I would be like, show me Margarita, and then people would make their pose. And then um, I had half of the group do a gallery walk, which is like a technique used in in um, artist habits of mind. Um, and it's to view and reflect on other people's projects. And I asked them to call out words um, that they see and popcorn them out, and then. The second word I did was anxiety. And to see that like manifest in a lot of people's bodies is so, so different. Yeah. Like people were holding their chest, people were on the ground. Some people were like, like looking up for an answer. Like it was, it was very telling of how people deal with that. And, and I think like, you know, and I, I was talking with somebody else after class and I heard that and like one of my friends was like, wow, I needed this. Like I needed this exercise. Yeah. Like I've, I've actually had experience with that exact same exercise because yeah. um, Dan directed Pygmalion um, like my senior yeah. year. Um, he had us go through that exercise, except in character in terms of like the gallery work. And so yeah. he used words, and we walked around the space and then explored what those words were to our characters. And that was really cool because then you have your fellow castmates as the ones pointing out little details. Yeah. 
and so that was really cool because again it's it's like the idea of like oh i don't feel like i'm in character until i'm in costume like going through those things and seeing what uh, hearing what other people see can inform character and so while it can be very healing in terms of like body work in general like it also works in rehearsal spaces oh, and absolutely. that's so cool about those kinds of works absolutely yeah absolutely it's it's so awesome and i i think what you just touched upon also gets into like the self care of the actor, which I know, which obviously is incredibly important overall. And I love that you're wanting to use this approach in theater education. Cause I think unfortunately so many people, I, I hesitate to say everyone because hopefully that's not the case. Almost everyone has that horror story of like, I had this one bad experience in a class where I wasn't taken care of where I needed to be. And that hurt. And theater as, as a whole is so he can be so healing. So it's, it's so important that we have educators who can hold each other up, hold the students up in order to make sure that no harm is being done in the classroom. Yeah, and it's also to, I feel like it's also to show them like, Hey, this is the environment you deserve to be in this yes. way. When they see something, you know, see something that's wrong especially in the industry they can be like uh that's not cool that's that's not right and i'm not saying i'm not saying you know the whole the industry as a whole is bad i'm just saying that there are a lot of situations unfortunately where there have been actors even tech people stage hands who have not been taken care of in the space mm -hmm. so i think that and my as evidenced by the iotsi strike alone you know like exactly <laughs> so it's 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 so telling that you know people are now standing up for you know what you know what they believe in what they want to see the industry become because it's what we know it can be yeah um, at the end of the day and I, I you know I was saying to like everybody in class I was like you know we all want to like just like make the biggest change that we can like mm -hmm. right now and i said but i think like the one big change that we can do is just right in our classrooms and i think that's like so important and just reminding that especially like the young kids going into this industry or who or who are working in this industry i think it's just important to remind them to be kind to themselves and i can't stress that enough yeah to be kind to yourself and that's with anything that's not even with just theater oh absolutely I mean, just being kind to yourself in all aspects of life and jobs and work and knowing when it's your time to take that step back and be like i need to do what's right for me and yeah. it's not reminding yourself that it's not you being selfish it's you honestly selflessly stepping back and being like i'm not going to you know i'm not gonna of that negative energy i'm not gonna you know i'm not gonna project that onto somebody else i'm going to go and handle it myself the way i know how to handle it and mm -hmm. then i'm going to come back with uh, you know a new perspective yeah it takes it takes courage to admit that okay i need this moment for myself to then be able to put my best foot forward and it's really interesting because you're because in talking about like perfectionism and things like that like I know even like, even in college auditions, we have like those moments of like wanting everything to be perfect, so so on and so forth. And like, what's interesting though, is that being, going through the pandemic and having to film so many self tapes and still continuing to do so, of course, that it's actually helped me a lot with getting away from perfectionism. Granted, that can be a completely different experience for someone else because I limit myself to three takes and I'm like, okay, that's it. We're well, done. We do like, the same yeah and it's like it, it, it stops you from going over those minor critiques because you're like this is the best one and also reminding yourself like in the room like you're only get gonna get the one or two anyway so yeah. like give them what they'd be getting you know obviously like if you like cough in the middle of it or something like that retake it like do yourself a favor but also like giving myself that mo that grace of like okay today that we did these three takes it's due on this day that's fine. We're just going to pick this best one. And that's just what's going to be. Yeah. I, I had to stop myself after, after doing it for the first time. And then 
I was doing it over and over again and I was like, you know, tears down the face. And oh, absolutely. Stressed. And I was like, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> no, you gotta be kind to yourself and just stop. Yeah, <laughs> just, just stop guys. Don't, just stop. Just stop. <laughs> <laughs> Take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. Uh, self tape. No, I also like, I think what helps me and this is like advice to anybody who's listening and out there doing self tapes. Um, honestly, like make a, like a, make a little reel of all your outtakes. Cause it's funny to just, just laugh, yeah. laugh at yourself. You don't laugh at yourself. I don't know what you're doing. Like he, he laughter is medicine. Laughter is literally the biggest dose of serotonin. You can feel the serotonin when you laugh. Give yourself that moment of laughter. So make a compilation of you looking ridiculous in your self tapes, because that's what I did. And I think it's hilarious. The amount of times that I've just like messed up my slate and I just start laughing is just wonderful. It's just so much fun to like when... It, it takes a lot sometimes when you, especially when you're trying to take yourself so seriously, but sometimes you're like, wow, I said my name was the song title. That's funny, yeah. you know? And just kind of like being like, okay, cool. Well, we'll start that one over again. And that's okay. <laughs> I I forgot the song title. I was like, hi, my name is Elena Rose Perlet and I'm, what am I singing? Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> well, we're going to take it again. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> And like speaking of like being silly in some ways, I believe that we discussed this a little bit earlier. But um, I heard I heard from a little bee that you uh, oh, yeah. do you, you like to play some D and D. Oh yes. how, how is that going? <laughs> um, it's going good. I started that during the pandemic, um, and then honestly, that has been a healing thing for me too. And honestly, I've gotten closer to the people that. You you know, you know, you know who they are. We have so many like overlapping people in our friend groups. It's very amusing. And and they know who they are. I know you're watching. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's another way of just expressing yourself, uh, especially theatrically. And, um, and, you know, becoming somebody that you're not or like actually taking like an aspect of you and making it like a person. Yeah. it's, it, it like, I'm like, oh, this sounds like so much fun. And then I like, people are talking about like character sheets and all of this like lore and preparation and things like that. I'm like, this sounds so daunting. Like it scares me sometimes, but it also does sound fun. <laughs> it is fun. And I highly recommend anybody if they are interested to try it. I have one shot or something. I feel like yeah. it's more up my alley. Like one shot, one shots are pretty good, and that's how I started. And then um, Robert Fischetti, another name. I'm gonna drop a lot of names today. It's okay, yeah. it happens. <laughs> uh, he was like, "Hey," because he was in the one shot with me. He's like, "Hey, do you want to join our campaign?" And I was like, like "Okay." <laughs> and now we've been doing that for like, oh God. Has it been almost two years? It's almost been yeah. two years. So oh, we, we did. It would be two years in the summer. So mm-hmm. kind of only been a year. And a, a almost bit. a year and a half. Almost a year. Yeah, almost, almost a year and a half. So um, yeah, I think it's crazy that like it went from doing this one shot to like actually doing all these other campaigns. And I even did one with um, some underclassmen uh, that I became friends with and got really close with my last year. I'm sad I got close with them my last year because I wish I, I was close to them like the year before when they came. <laughs> um, but yeah, we ended up finishing a game and it's sad to finish a game up. And mm-hmm. I actually finished it with my very first character that I made for um, a one shot. And uh, I was like, it was very wholesome. No one died because that can happen. We love that. We prefer no one die. <laughs> we prefer everybody, all the squishies staying alive. And well, they did. Squishies. So <laughs> they did. And it was oh such a magical little session. It was a full day session. And um, it was it was like we played it in the common room in Foundy. And we sat mm-hmm. there with our with our dice and you know and nerd things and uh, our DM would play music so we would get in like you would be in like the setting the and stuff yeah, yeah. and um There's some really and, pretty dice out there <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh 
I'm a dice goblin. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. I feel like you have like all of these like really gorgeous like epoxy ones with like flowers and stuff inside. Well, no, 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 not at all. <laughs> you called me out. <laughs> <laughs> because here's the thing: there are aspects of us that make us the same person, and it happens, and that's okay. But I'm just acknowledging that in us, and that's okay. <laughs> oh, it's Austin just texted me and said, "Pull them out, coward." <laughs> Austin, yay, he's watching live. Hello. Oh my god, what a loser. I'm out of him. <laughs> Show us the dice. Show us the dice. <laughs> calm down, calm down, people. <laughs> okay, this is my we've upgraded because I had a small little little thing. Oh my god. <laughs> That's incredible. My shame. <laughs> There's no. also there's also I am a superstitious little lady and my character for um Robert's game um always rolls really low so I had a I got her her own little set but I keep it in a separate bag so I don't you know you don't confuse them no and I don't you know put you know bad energy on it um yeah. I'm just gonna show like only a few but I will show you the, the flower dice because that- The ones that I named. <laughs> the ones that you literally called me out for. Um, actually, Colleen Kelly got me these and they have, of course they have roses in them. Oh, she that's them for Christmas. Yeah, and they're they're really nice and they have cats too on like little cat claws so and fun. little witchy cats. Oh my so, God. When I, what class is your character? I, I I know very little and I forget the names of things, but. I mean, I am multiple characters, <laughs> but um, the character I'm playing now with um, with uh, all of the nerds and the goons and the goobs uh, is, um, uh, her name is Rovine Lacar and she is a druid and druids are basically like, they get their magic from nature, I ironic because I like flowers and all that stuff. And <laughs> and um, and yeah, she's a circle of the moon druid. Ironic again, because I love moons. <laughs> um, so, so earthy, so earthy. I, I love playing a druid and I would play a druid over and over again if I could and totally overpowered, like, like crazy. They have the craziest spells and I love playing them. They're amazing. Obviously like, more people can talk about them. I'm just like, I love playing them. It's no, fine. Like, if, if that's what you're drawn to, that's what you're drawn to, you know? I feel like I've been told that like I, several different kinds of classes. And so I'm like, I don't know what I would play, but I feel like Druid is one that like someone has said before. I feel like you would play a cleric. Yeah, that was that's the other one that I've also been told. I so. think that's that's the vibes you give me because clerics, <laughs> clerics heal people, but they can yep. also be like, no, you know? <laughs> They can also yeah, be like, very defensive. like laying down the law kind of thing. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh my goodness, this has been so much fun. Uh, really quick, I want to talk to a few, like a few things. You're currently working on your master's in Boston, as we know. Hooray for this! Um, how long is the program? How long are you going to be out there? So, um, planning to be here for at least two years, um, give or take. But I might stay past that. Um, who knows? Yeah, uh, but I wasn't sure how long the program was because mine was two years, but some are three. So, wasn't right, sure. right. Um, it really depends on when people get things done because I can oh, okay. literally finish this in a year and a half to two years. Um, because I'm only in the MA, I'm not in the MFA. The gotcha. MFA is three years. Gotcha. Um, so, uh, and I didn't want to do that to myself so no that's fair <laughs> that's so, fair. I, I, I did that to myself and it was a lot so I respect all of those fun fa fun fam who do the part-time cool. MA track and take their time a little bit <laughs> yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do that MA and, and they're gonna do that MFA and I'm gonna stay here <laughs> yeah um, <laughs> is there anything like within the program itself that you're really looking forward to that's coming up um be it like a class or an experience? Oh God. <laughs> um, I I don't know. I think I'm looking forward to like my final projects. Um, I think that's something I'm looking forward to because I'm not even, 
I don't want to even think about next semester right now. It's a little stressful. That's okay. Uh, I get it. But <laughs> no, I just, I'm very excited to just like get that on its feet and stuff because I'm working with one of my good friends, Yasmin, on we're doing a process drama to teach Salem witch trials because we're both like, mm. we love witchy things and we want to make our own like mock trial and teach them about, um, we want to bring in how gender roles are um, put in place um, during that time because of religion and Absolutely. religious beliefs and how religious religion was basically the politics of that time, it was everything. Oh, absolutely. Um, Everything in the crucible is uh, in reference, like law, like to the Bible, like that's it, the, the law was that the religion. So yeah, I think that's so interesting. Yeah, very interesting project. So that's really exciting. Oh, my yeah. God. I'm um, just excited for that. If there's any people in the chat, I'm going to check Instagram really quick to see if like any questions came in. I posted it kind of late, so that's kind of my fault. But if anyone, if there's anyone in the chat who has any questions, like feel free to like come say hello, give a pop on over and give us a question. Um, it's very possible. Yeah, I posted a little too late on the Overture's Instagram page to get a question in there, but that's okay. But if there's anyone who's watching who has a question, feel free to pop in. But if Hi. not, that is okay too. Um, but yeah, um, in general, social medias, where can we find you? Um, you can follow me at um, Elena underscore Rose. That's E-L-A-Y-N-A. -A. It, it's a weird thing. And then Rose. Okay. Rose. Amazing. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, anything we should check out in particular? I mean... I don't know if you have any like videos or like anything like that you want to check out or just like connect with you on Instagram. Say hi. Talk about. Yeah. yeah. If anybody has like any questions like for me personally, um, you know, about life and and even like being in your undergrad or, you know, being in grad school or looking to do that or being like, what do I do with my life? <laughs> um, I don't have all the answers because I'm still <laughs> figuring that out. But um, if literally anybody needs anything, I'm kind of there. Yeah, so. <laughs> of course, of course. Amazing. It's been so, so wonderful to have you here on stream. Um, I'll plug mine really quick just so we can make sure that's in there. I'm on Instagram and Twitter at Laura underscore Marjoram. Um, it's also my Twitch name. So if you're not sure how to spell it, you can go to there. Um, you can find this show overtures here on Twitch. Obviously you can follow on Instagram at overtures show. So you have two S's in there. It looks a little funny, but I promise it's legit. Um, and then you can also search us on YouTube overtures show. If you're watching this, uh, video later on, you're probably on YouTube watching it. So yay, that's awesome too. Um, next stream, I still plan on having one this upcoming Friday, November 12th. Um, we're having to re have some rescheduling things. Piper had to reschedule. So I'm currently working on organizing a new guest, but stay tuned to the Instagram for updates and all that kind of good stuff. Um, Elena, do you have any wonderful, like final thoughts for viewers live and in the future? Um, life is a wild ride. So kind of just strap on in and let it take you wherever it takes you because sometimes like even like the smallest of signs is actually gonna make the biggest impact in your life also be your own cheerleader because <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm from one of the biggest cheerleaders that i know <laughs> i will cheer for everybody here well please DM me and i will cheer for you yes exactly, exactly. <laughs> Well, thank you to everyone who tuned in live and anyone who's watching in the future. Um, yeah, give us likes, give us some watches, all that good stuff, sending love. And yeah, I'm going to end the broadcast here. So thanks everyone for tuning in.